Chapter 2. The Palace What she saw was entrancing. It was unique and different from anything she had seen before. She heard the thud of the door as it closed behind her, and what sounded like bolts fastening. A cold sensation on her nose awakened her from her trance. She looked up to see snowflakes falling from the ceiling. Snowing? We are inside, she thought. Widening her eyes, she saw the main dance room which she'd visited many times, but now it was different. It was larger and filled with people she didn't recognise. They all wore fancy dress, and some were dressed like animals. The dance floor had been lowered, and they were raised above it. A carpeted walkway encircled the focal point where the dancing was taking place. She looked to her left, and in the distance saw two bars, separated by a staircase, leading to a raised VIP area. In the past it had always been empty, now it was full. Scantily dressed women and eccentric Victorian dressed men, plus a real tiger, made up part of the bemusing crowd high above the room. Untroubled by the snow, a butterfly landed on her hand. She squinted to see it better, and she did. Two circles of glass sharpened her vision. A passing man had stopped and placed spectacles over her nose. He said, These will help you see her better. He added, Yes, that's Jane. She's a regular here. An absolute nectar guzzler. Never a moment is she flying straight. Only because you're buying me shots all night, hoping you can take me home, said the butterfly, still perched on Katie's hand. Katie looked once again and noticed that it wasn't a butterfly at all, but a small lady with wings attached to her. A fairy, Katie shouted. No, I'm not a fairy. I am human. I'm just small and I happen to fly. No, you're a fairy, said the man. Katie looked through her thick-lensed spectacles at the man. His white jacket was reflective with a waistcoat and trousers to match. Hello, lady. What is your name? He said, sticking his hand out for Katie to shake. She accepted it. Tell me yours first, Katie said in an upbeat manner. I am Captain Cash. So, Captain, what do you, Captain? I captain this place he said in an excitable, high-pitched manner. Does that mean you also captain me? Katie was easing into her new surroundings. For her own amusement, she was playfully testing him, while at the same time getting a fast read on her new conversationalist. This was something she had become very skilled at doing. Captain Cash went so red in the face that his head brightly contrasted his whole outfit. Katie knew instantly that she was quite innocent and not a threat. It's okay, Captain. I am unsaleable. Jane contributed straight after this and said, Don't be fooled by his shyness. He's not shy at the end of the night. Jane, stop making me out to be a pest, said Captain Cash. You're blocking me from speaking to this fine girl. Katie scrunched her face up and said, She's not blocking you at all. If I wish to talk, I shall. And thanks, Jane, for that vital information. I am an innocent girl after all. I don't want to be taken advantage of. Ha, ha, ha. Rath couldn't contain his laughter, but was silenced by Katie's glare. Captain went so red that sweat poured down his face. He needed an escape. Well, there, my lady. I have pressing matters to attend in the VIP. The tiger is hungry and we can't have that now, can we? It would definitely spoil the party. Captain Cash left, leaving Jane studying Katie. Jane said, I haven't seen you here before. You are definitely not a regular. I am new here. I've just arrived and I'm taking it all in. Arrived from where? Wraith interrupted. She's arrived from Earth. Earth? Jane exclaimed in a bemused manner. We don't get many visitors from there. Well, not for long anyway. Wraith spoke once more. Yes, Katie is quite special. She's here to stay. Well, just for a little while. Jane looked pleased with these comments. You know, Katie, sometimes you can just tell when you like someone, and I think I'm going to like you very much. Do you want a shot? A shot? asked Katie. Yes, a shot. I can't carry much else, so I've become a connoisseur of them. Also, I get served first as I am small, and I can fly to the front of the queue. Yes, I would like one, thank you. Do they do tequila? What's tequila? asked Jane, confused but intrigued. It's alcohol, you know. 
You normally drink them and then lick salt and bite a lemon straight afterwards. Why would anyone want to do that? It sounds horrible. No, it's not alcohol. They do provide that, but it's only for the men of the sea. The shots are made of nectar from flowers, and the one I'm going to get you is from the wild red berry flower. Sounds great. I will have one, please. Jane looked very pleased and immediately took flight from Katie's hand. Katie felt the intermittent sensation from Jane's wings. It tickled, and Katie gave out a little giggle. <laughs> Wraith turned to her and just couldn't wait to explain where she was. She was getting used to the idea that Wraith loved explaining things. Katie, this is the festival. This is the party. In here you will experience the spirit, joy, happiness, adventure, escapism and expression. Katie interrupted. Where do these people come from? The interruption surprised him, but he liked it. He liked it that Katie was inquisitive and didn't mind saying what was on her mind. They live in this palace. They live here. And what do they do? What do you mean? What do they do during the day for work? Wraith looked puzzled. They sleep and then they party. Katie paused. But how does the palace function? People must have to work and things must be done. You sound like a bureaucrat. A bureaucrat? Yes, they come from another land far away from the palace. They are constantly trying to capture us and stop us from partying. They want to enslave us. How would they enslave you? They want us to work for them. Does that mean there will be a war? No, they're not so aggressive. They prefer to do things by pen and paper. We already must work one day a month. It's terrible. Our king is the weakest king we've had, and he's not brave enough to stand up to them. Many of us fear one day we shall work more often than not. That sounds terrible. In what world does that happen? I oh, know. I've seen your world, Katie. I'm sure your people and king have won all the battles against such bureaucrats. No, Wraith, we've lost. We definitely work more than we party, although I'm one of the few who parties more than she works. Katie said, gleefully. How have you managed that? We must share this secret with others. Well, I've kept my overheads low. I'm a student, so no one tells me when to work, and my partying lifestyle is fully paid for. By whom? Men. Oh, I see. You are sponsored. Why? Well, most men who pay for me don't have to work. Their parents pay for them, and they pay for me because they want my attention. So these men pay for your attention? Yes. How strange. I'm getting your attention now. Am I to be charged? <laughs> no, Wraith, this is on the house. Such a strange world you come from. I have seen this happen. I just thought it was a cultural formality built into your genetic fabric from birth. Yes, Wraith, throughout centuries men have been chasing women, and women loved to be chased. I have learnt to enjoy being chased. What happens if they catch you? said Wraith, doubtfully. Katie suddenly snapped out of the flow of the conversation and asked, What's with the outfit, Wraith? It's my dress. Are you a warrior? Yes. When I'm not at the party, I am training. Would you say that is your work? Work? No, I enjoy it. To me it is the same as the party. It's work, but you enjoy it. I haven't really thought of it that way, but I guess you are right. Have you ever had to kick ass? By that you mean battle, yes, but very rarely. I prefer to use diplomacy, but on occasion I battle monster polar bears that try to break into the palace. Polar bears? I really like the sound of this place, said Katie. You wouldn't think that if you had sent them away. Great fierce animals they are. Katie began to look around the room once more, she could see the queues in the bars were very busy, and many hustled and bustled around them. Jane returned and hovered at Wraith and Katie's eye level. She carried in both hands a glowing red shot of red berry nectar. Katie said, Thanks, Jane. That's very sweet of you. It looks lovely. Wait until you drink it. It'll knock your socks off. Katie removed the shot from Jane's grasp, and Jane instantly flew a little higher. Her wings were straining under its weight. Phew! she said. I don't normally have to carry them that far. Katie opened her mouth and in one go she swallowed it. Smoke blew out of her nose and she felt the strong kickback from it. 
The drink made the whole of her body tingle. She felt for a moment that she could fly, and then she felt wide awake and excited. Gosh, Jane, what was that? That was my favourite. You will only need one, and you will probably feel sick. I have so much energy, and I feel great. I want to dance. Wraith, let's dance. Wraith shook his head and said, I don't dance. That is ridiculous. You can't come from such a land and not dance. That's not the purpose of my role. I am a protector. I never indulge in play, and I must protect you and the palace. Katie, frustrated, said, I don't think any polar bears are coming in here now. It's not just the polar bears. I have to spot potential troublemakers, and I must protect you, Katie. Nonsense. Look here, karate boy. I'm more than capable of looking after myself. That's not entirely true, is it, Katie? Why are you here in the first place? Katie screwed up her face and frowned at him. She had almost forgotten about that. The atmosphere and party had taken her over, and all she wanted to do was join in. Here, take this, she said, and she thrust the timer into Wraith's hands. If you won't dance with me, I shall find someone who will. That would make me happy, Katie. Make sure you pick wisely. There are difficult people here. I would hate for you to have a bad time. I shall watch you. Katie quickly scanned the room. She was furious that Wraith had said no to dancing with her. She didn't take rejection well. She was very good at hiding her feelings. On the outside, she wasn't showing her angry and hurt emotions. She saw a man dressed like no other. He was wearing a scuffy brown shirt and quite obviously had holes in, but had covered them up with patches. He wore a black silk bandana with a full face of stubble and an earring, blue jeans and a pair of boots. Dark, greasy hair crept out from under his bandana, which was contrasted by a pair of striking blue eyes. A bad boy, Katie thought. Her rebellious side took over. She marched over to him, leaving Wraith standing by the balcony overlooking the dance floor. She walked right up to the man and looked up at him, which was unusual for Katie. She was five foot ten and much taller with heels. Hi, I'm Katie. The man looked unfazed and replied, Hi, I'm Alec the Fisherman. Thanks for watching Festavia, Chapter 2 The Palace Part 1. The second part will be out very soon. Alternatively, you can buy the book on Kindle.